of the Chinese LPL. I'm, of course, still Max Ellis Anderson, joined by Jake Spawn Tiberi, and we are about to get into our first match between Starhorn Royal Club and M3, of course, formerly World Elite Academy. And, man, I'm just so ready, but we do have some bad news. Yeah, Name not starting lineup, uh, so we have been told to. Uh, sorry, I'm going to probably get this wrong. H Y Y. H Y Y. I think we're going with who is a solo queue mid player, we believe. So yeah, a bit of a free agent because they didn't quite have uh, anyone to fill that slot. Of course, the issue is with contracts from um, E D G. Name moving over. A few issues getting him in in a timely fashion, but uh, the idea is hopefully in by sort of mid-February, something like that. Not entirely sure of when we'll actually see Name, but I really hope he comes soon because he's sort of the linchpin for this team if they're going to play anything like the style that they used to. Yeah, so we saw that uh, Starhorn Royal Club, very, very famous for that raise the puppy strategy. I, that, that was where they had their most success. To, mm. I, I think that they were very, very happy playing around Uzi. Uh, Zero was a very reactionary support, like following Uzi around the map. So it's definitely going to change things up a little bit. I think a lot more pressure goes on to Insect and, of course, Corn and Collar to lift their games a little bit and try and carry them through this one. And they're definitely against a formidable opponent. Oh, that's exactly right. M3 are looking ridiculous at the moment. I like to say that they brought players over from the former team Samsung Light Blue with uh, Looper from Samsung White in the top lane and da uh, Dade, sorry, in that mid lane. And... That is looking really scary. Of course, Looper, one of my favorite players to watch, of course, still plays Singed, which is just cool, let's be honest. Yeah, Looper was... Uh he, w he had a great World Series, don't get me wrong, but he was often criticized for being nearly the worst player, I think, on that li uh, white lineup. Mm -hmm. um, I think that he played as a top laner around having very, very strong map control in other areas, and he used his teleport very effectively. And I think that they're the strengths of Looper's game. Uh, the weakness is, is if he doesn't have those strong uh, laners of pressure elsewhere, can he generate it himself? And we've seen mixed success in this. We saw when uh, Ryu, the uh, jungle came through for M3, uh, Rio, I believe. Rio, yeah. Yeah, 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 Ruo had a, a good uh, game and really got up there and helped Blooper out. He was able to carry the heck out of the game. Uh, but then we've also seen some pretty bad games coming out where he was almost relevant on the map. So I'll be interested to see how Looper and Ruo can get around. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And something that I'm very excited about, going back to this mid lane, talking about um, more of our sort of Korean import situation, Dade taking on Korn in that mid lane. And Korn's one of these players that's just kept getting better. And I'm just super excited to see how he does against um, Dade, who's honestly been hugely successful, but for a long time now. And could he have already reached his peak? Uh, I think Dade definitely showed last season that he's still a player to be reckoned with. He, at the start of the season particularly, a lot of his champs came back into favor, and his champion was just massive champion pool. Uh, I think that Korn, on the other hand, has had flashes of brilliance, yep. uh, where he almost plays porn-esque, if you wanted to relate him to a player. And plays his champion pool definitely does remind us a little bit of porn. Yeah, definitely plays a fantastic fizz, so watch out for that one as well. So I think that this is a thing where we've seen Korn maybe get on, up on the rise and Dade maybe start falling off a little bit from all reports, so it will be definitely interesting to see how that does play out in the middle lane. Yeah, that's very true. And Ruo versus Insect here in the jungle as well. Insect, of course, everyone knows this guy's name. has just been the monster Lee Sin player of old. And against Ruo, who actually previously played with Koro on a team called Rising Stars. Actually, Kitties as well um, over on that team. So definitely been around the scene for a long time, but not really with the star power that Insect has. Well, not internationally, but in China, definitely respected as mm -hmm. one of the best jungle players coming out of China. So I think that uh, Ruo definitely will be able to take it to Insect. I think Insect has played a much more controlled fashion from what I've seen lately. Okay. Um, but he definitely uh, still has those games where he just goes absolutely insane, where he picks up a completely weird champion. He put <laughs> the fiddlesticks of Pantheon are just like reminders of how far into the past this guy can reach to pull something out special. Yeah, I'm really excited, especially with the fact that, you know, if the top three junglers get taken off the board, so many more become relevant. So Insect can really pick his his preferred option out of the massive amount that is still about as relevant as the ones that his opponents are going to yeah, have the definitely. option for. And I think that we do have to hit on the part of M3 that is the big question mark is that bottom lane. We've talked mm. about how strong the solo lanes are, how the jungle will be able to positively impact them and hopefully set up the map. But there's a big question mark over this bottom lane. Yeah, and Candy, formerly Alan, which is one of my favorite names, honestly. I just think it's a little bit hilarious. I'm not going to lie to you. But Candy... 
I haven't seen too much from him, to be perfectly honest. It's sort of like not really the bottom lane that you think of when you're thinking about China, and there are so many that have so many star-studded names in there. Yeah, and uh, that, that's what I was kind of hitting on. They're, they're definitely not a bad bottom lane by any stretch, but you just have to understand that when you're an average bottom lane in a, chi- a Chinese region that has so mm. many fantastic like A-grade bottom lanes and like, even some S-tier ones up there. We saw a couple yesterday, um, especially with like the PYLs in the support position yep. that really dictate the flow of the game. It's just that they don't have really the power to go toe-to-toe with these players. Maybe getting a little bit of a gift in disguise because we have mentioned that Name won't be playing, so yeah. we'll be... Good to see how they go head-to-head head in this game. Yeah, and Love City, I haven't heard much from him as well. I mean, that's M3's support player. So Love City and Candy, they have been playing together for a little while, but just not necessarily as well-known or as known for their mechanics as, uh, as the opposing bottom lane, especially in the support side, considering the fact that they do have a sub. But once Name gets back, I think this matchup will be very different. But thus far, like you said, I think that they may have been given a little bit of a gift in disguise. Yeah, so a little bit of leeway. We'll, uh, I think that that's where they have to capitalize. If they visit the bottom lane, maybe the synergy isn't uh, built up on Starhorn Royal Club because they would have mm. been working so hard to integrate Nami into a lineup to at the last minute have to use a sub if that is how it uh, eventuated. We'll just mean that there's a little bit more miscommunication coming out of the bottom lane. Yeah. They already said that that was a team that was famous for with acknowledging that they didn't have a language, uh, a common language. So they use a lot of pings, a lot of uh, instinctive play in team fights to get around the map, just a lot of uh, individual name shot uh, calling to uh, prioritize targets. So they definitely made it work, but adding a brand new set of people into this dynamic is just going to make it so much harder for Starhorn Royal Club. Yeah, it is going to be difficult. And going back to Starhorn Royal Club, like you said, we do have Kohler in the top lane up against Looper, and Kohler is a, a rock for Starhorn Royal Club. I mean, he has to hold the top of the map while all the focus was on Uzi back in the day. So he's always had to be really strong. And against Looper, like you said, sort of performing the least well as far as that Samsung White lineup is concerned. But they are our Season 4 champions. So yeah, and he's still going to be a formidable player. Being the worst player on the best team ever <laughs> means that you're still a pretty good player. Yeah. So Looper can definitely hold his own in this top lane. I think uh, on this pan- uh, patch particularly, Kola will have a better time. Uh, his Aurelia and his Jax have always been the two champions that have impressed me when he has been able to get them. He's had some ups and downs, as you said, but he is a very solid player. So I think that if he can get on a comfort pick, be able to farm it out, he can become one of these late-game split-pushing powerhouses. Yeah, and we've seen the fact that Aurelia has been a huge pick just recently. Acorn picking that one up yesterday and going massive, really dictating the flow of those fights and then Flame picking it up straight afterwards on the same team saying, yeah, I can play this one too, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah, exactly right. And that, that was the dynamic thing about that sub because uh, if we just touch on that a little bit, Acorn and play, Flame played the exact same champion in two very different manners. Uh, yeah. Acorn getting in there just absorbing Flandre so as well played it very damage. differently. Yeah, it, so you just see the versatility, uh, versatility of Aurelia on this patch and I think she's definitely want, going to be a key pick of Band. Yeah, and I think that as well, Kohler will probably show us an even different way to pick up that champion. So we'll see how that goes. And how do you think, with the fact that they won't be able to focus as many resources around this bottom lane, as we do get into champion select, of course, but do you think not being able to focus as many resources into that bottom lane, is that going to hurt Star Hunter Royal Club? They're going to have to change too much in their strategy? Uh, I think that uh, Insect still needs to get down there and focus a little bit of resources because HYY might need some help. So yep. it's probably for the different reason. They don't want it to fall behind as opposed to catapulting it forward. Insect, of course, is known to camp out that bottom lane whilst he's been on Star Hunter Royal Club. So yeah, I think that still will be the start. Yeah, as we do have the bands coming through, of course, Janna, and LeBlanc being taken away on the side of M3, and Lysandra and Rek'Sai being taken away from M3 on the side of Star and Royal Club, and pretty standard bands that we've been seeing cropping up. The Janna might be a little bit interesting, but she's just been seeing so much play. She's so huge across the board. Zero is such a good Janna player. Mm. Probably one of the first people in the LPL to really bring that across and show how effective it would be. Sivir being taken off the board. These are very similar bands to what we were seeing yesterday. Yeah, Sivir is such a popular pick yesterday. Be, yeah, the two champions that, for the LPL region in specific yep. are going to be taken away or picked away every single game. Very true, and you can almost see the, the Korean influence coming through here. Of course, LeBlanc sees a sp- fair bit of time there on the ban uh, bench yeah, over think, in that region I as think, well. Yeah, he's saying that the mid laners in uh, LPL really started to step up, of course. Mm. Not, not really known for having many Ooh, great Jarvan mid laners. There are a few. Well. And Java being taken away as there's well. One so this is Lee Sin. There's, there's a Lee Sin. There's also a Na that uh, is yeah. available to be picked up on the side of M3 if they want him. That will give 
Lee Sin and potentially a Thresh and Zero, if he wants to pick up Champion, he is like Mad Life 2.0 on that Thresh. Yeah, he's definitely a very good Thresh player. Can use it uh, defensively as well as being able to set up picks for his team. So I like the versatility of Thresh, particularly yep. if you want to pick a support early on. Uh, Zero also plays Nami relatively well as well. Uh, it will look like it'll be the Lee Sin being taken away from Insect there. So good first pick up here. We'll be able to influence the top side of the map as we said it needs to. Oh, 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 oh. Insect. Hover in the Shacko. Let's bring him back some fans. Fantastic memories. He has, of course, played it in the LPL. Yeah, so. he got Uzi a pentakill on Vayne with that Shacko. It was beautiful to watch. Yeah, and it looks like they will be locking in Narf as the second pick on their side and potentially a fresh pickup. I do like those uh, two pickups. Doesn't really give much away from a team comp point of view, but both very solid. Yeah, this is exactly what we're talking about as well. These are the three picks that we saw being competitive, and they have been picked away. So whatever Starhawn Royal Club couldn't pick up, they pick up the other two power picks. And a few hovers coming through here over on the side of M3 and see what Dade wants to do. Whether they're going to leave sort of the, the top and mid picks to the last round, make sure that there's not as much counter picking available here for Star Hunter. Yeah, I, I think that that will be uh, maybe the tactic, although they are hovering Kassan, who is an extremely strong pick at the moment. And he seems to be leaping back into popularity, which is interesting yeah. because we've seen mixed results. We've seen some Annie's go absolutely huge and others not be able to really lend much. He does have that big AOE CC as Lucian looks to be the AD carry locked in on yeah. M3's side. Uh, however, we've also seen that she's extremely squishy in lane and if you do gain, can be killed repetitively. Yeah, it's true. And we saw the synergy with Rek'Sai working out really well for EDG, but Rek'Sai, of course, on the ban list at the moment, so we're not going to be able to see that one coming through. And Seeing it, Lucian back in the hands of our ED carry players, and he sort of got nerfed a few too many times to really see that massive popularity. Corky coming out as we're seeing that hovered over on the side of Starhorn, sort of in a little bit favor there, and even Ezreal coming back as well, but Candy wanting to go back to that Lucian. Yeah, so um, we've seen that, uh, as you said, Lucian's fallen out of the top three. Oh it seems goodness. to be Corky, Ezreal, as well as uh, Graves at the moment, but. LPL maybe not picking up the Graves as much. Lucian is still definitely a strong champion. And I'm, I'm very surprised that they've decided to leave their jungle for last pick here. Blind picking a Kassan is definitely a risk and it will be uh, maybe be able to be punished out of uh, M3 here as, yeah, something like Zed does do very well against them. Yeah, and look, I think it's just Korn saying, look, I want to I want to show everyone that I am Korn 2.0. Korn played an incredible Kassadin yesterday that we saw getting kills everywhere all over that map. Of course, Rift walking for like a I'm double much, kill. I, I really yeah. like the Jay's pick up here. Definitely a lane that can bully extremely well. Yep. And wow, it might actually even be in the top lane. That might be a mid Annie. A mid Annie. Or a top Annie. Who We've seen actually some crazy top, things. top Annie has been coming in just recently. Been seeing a little bit more play in that in that solo queue, but I didn't know that we were going to be potentially seeing that here in the LPL. Yeah. Because of course we don't have access to solo queue in China. We have no idea what's going on over there. Yeah, definitely did not expect that one to come through. So it will either be a top Jace and a mid Annie. And wow, it looks like Rengar being picked up by Insect. Of course, he showed his proficiency proficiency on that yeah. champion. And it does look like Annie will be going into the top lane against that Nar. <laughs> So maybe some secret strats. And I mean, it's not unlike Looper to pick up crazy champions. We mentioned the Singe. Also in Worlds, he picked up Akali and wrecked people. Hadn't seen Akali in that top lane for a long time. Of course, thinking back to North America with Westrass and Voiboy over there. But I'm excited to see what Annie can do. Yeah, he also kind of uh, put out the Kassanen as well at Worlds and proved that not only Akali, but Kassanen could also go into his yeah. Assassin champion pool. So he definitely has a versatility known for his uh, tanky laners, I guess, uh, but able to pull out some high damage threats as well. Yeah, and we'll see how he builds this Annie as well, whether he's just going to be like some sort of molten shield, sort of tibbers for the stun, sort of a stun bot walking around as like tanky Annie? I don't, I don't, I'm not no, even sure. I, I, I expect Rod of Ages threat. sort of just damage, wanting to get that stun for a lot of yeah, I, I think that it will be that. I think that they looked at it in the end because uh, Jace has a very good matchup against Kassadin. Mm -hmm. uh, so wanting to put a lot of pressure there, but you do need some AP damage on the map. So using Annie as more of that flex pick. Uh, yep. Maybe they played in the support role and the top lane. So yeah, it worked out in the end, definitely through Champions League because that would have been a curveball that Starhorn Royal Club weren't expecting. Yeah, it's true. And with the, um, the Corky off the table as well, sort of known for managing to deal with having a Zed on your team and getting some extra magic damage in there in, in form of that um, 
Phosphorus Bomb and, of course, those rockets as well, really giving you a bit more magic damage and a little bit more mixture so that it does force your opponent to build some of that magic resist. It's definitely a handy idea. But uh, we'll see whether this Annie's going to work out in the top lane. And yeah. I think if we're going to trust anyone to do it, it's going to be Looper. Yeah, but they have a very strong uh, mid-game lineup, so they need to make things happen in maybe the first 25 minutes. Otherwise, the late-game pressure that will come out of Starhorn Royal Club is just too much with that Nah and with that Cassidy. That's exactly right, but we are onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen, with M3 on our blue side for this best of two, and Starhorn Royal Club in the red. Of course, they will be swapping after this next one. Dada and Korn just checking each other out here in the mid lane. Yeah, so Dade should be looking to get aggressive in this lane. That's why we see the bottle pick coming out of Kazan, as we do in a lot of lanes, as Looper gets some early aggression down onto Kola. Oh, Sonic Wave Resonating Strike actually going to land here as well. Kola's in a lot of trouble, forced to use that flash very early. Ruho, man, so aggressive. Yeah, and Annie's Q on such a low cooldown early game can just throw it out for the continual harass and has a very smooth auto attack animation. Uh, Kola was lucky to get out of that one alive. He flashed over the wall, and the resonating strike Sonic Wave combo must have been coming up soon. Yeah, we'll see whether um, Annie's going to be at loop is going to be able to capitalize on this lack of flash as well. Because if Annie's good at anything, it's setting up ganks. And if anyone can gank early, it's going to be Lee Sin. So Kola is going to be in a lot of trouble early on unless he's careful. But it looks to me like there might be a lane swap coming in. Yeah, so electing into that lane swap, I think more importantly, the potion was used. So there would have been no sustain out of Nah in this lane. And that would have just been devastating against someone that can throw out all of those Qs like Annie. So smart move here to get the double jungle going. Maybe a bit of a late invade coming over onto Ruo as well. Yeah, we'll see. Ooh, looking dangerous here. There's insects just coming around. So they will catch them out here. Yeah, Insects just going to find Ruo, but they are going to be able to get out. That being said, that's the smite on cooldown. Insects just going to be able to smite that one away. That was Ruo's smite used as well early, so had to burn a, uh, the cooldown and not able to get anything for it. Does Wardy's blue, so we'll have the timer on that one, but great early game uh, control here coming out of Starhorn Royal Club. Yeah, really good rotational move after a, what was an awkward beginning to this game as well. So managing to come back from a difficult situation has Royal Club. And the other thing is that Rengar doesn't have a great first clear. It's fine, but he does get relatively low. So having someone help you out to pick up a clear, uh, first clear and then be able to gank with your, as we see Dade going extremely aggressive. Oh my goodness, look at the order. Has hit level two just before Korn did. Now Korn finally dinging on that one. The Ruo going down very low as well. He is going to be able to pick up his red buff. So still going to have a lot of gank potential. Yeah, and Starhorn Royal Club electing to jungle vertically on the top side of the map. So not looking to pick up a free buff start for themselves. Kola will be sharing experience from this. So will hit his level two before he teleports into the bottom lane, you would suspect. Although it looks like a freeze has been successfully set up on the side of M3. So Candy will just be free farming that way. Yeah, Lost City just going to come and help out taking this blue buff. The blue sentinel as it is. So as you said, two buff start for both of our junglers, but and still working out for And freezes pushes being set up in both lanes, so no one looking to really increase the tempo of oh this game. Oh my goodness, Dade. Looking to be in a fair bit of trouble here as he's trying to put on as no, much pressure as possible. he's cheating to his side of the map. That's a very good play from Dade. They're understanding that if they're on the top side of the jungle, that he can't be up there and able to get out of there, no problem whatsoever, although it will mean a four-man push in the mid lane. Yeah, four men strong coming through here as we do just have HYY clearing out this top, freezing up this top, sorry. Yeah, so just to expand experience. on that a little bit further, if your jungle is controlled on the bottom side of the map as a mid laner, it is so important to cheat towards that side because that means that you have reinforcements so much early, you know that no one can come from really that side. So, yeah, great play from Dido there to understand exactly what he needed to do to get out of that game. Didn't have to burn anything. Yeah, Accelerated Shock Blast going to come through there as well. Gets a lot of damage down onto Korn. Hits a slow on the very edge there. That's great Jace mechanics coming out. As we have, once again, Insect rotating into this bottom lane now, although is standing on a ward, so it has been spotted out by Candy. Don't think this, much will come from this game. Yeah, and in this freeze situation, I mean, it's a little bit harder for a Rengar to really do all that much in this early game where he wants to be leaping from those brushes. And if it's frozen at the turret, I mean, you can't really get in there. Yeah, and this is 1v2 with... Uh, in the bottom lane, although it's pushing in Candy's direction, so he's getting all of that farm and all of the experience as well. So he's two levels higher than Kola at the moment, and of course Zero down there is soaking experience, so he's not going to catch up anytime soon. Whereas in the top lane, uh, Loop is only just being uh, joined by Love, so he's maybe picking up a little bit more CS for himself. Yeah, about to hit that level three. 
sort of unable to do it just yet. But HYY more than happy just to go 1v2 here, of course, against two level twos. If you're level four Corky, you're going to be feeling okay. Yeah, and Insect rotating around now on the top side of the map. There is a couple of wards spotting him out and a nice pink ward just being able to so see his path through the jungle. Warding. And that was loved first back there, so really good play coming out of the support player on the side of M3. Yep. Meanwhile, Candy still just farming up here. Has hit level 5 at this stage. He's Pulls behind a little bit on CS, though. So just wanting to keep Freeze in this lane. Yeah, pulled his minions to the side there just to ensure that the Freeze continued and that wasn't going to crash into the turret as another accelerated Shock Blast comes through. CS lead starting to really go in Dade's favor here as he throws down a pink board to keep himself safe as well. Insect may need to get into this mid lane before level 6 to help out. Yeah, he is hanging around, waiting in the wings, and you can see that tier already stacking as well, along with that long sword. Dade. So zero trying clearing to get to that, out that pink board straight away. So that's a hundred gold going to waste from Dade. Maybe saved his life though. That's a big wave starting to build up. Yeah, force pulse. He's going to clear out that wave a little bit. Not too much. And you can see Korn just feeling the pressure. 33 to 38. So not too bad when you can see him playing so far back, but forced to farm with those abilities. Yeah, and Ruo, uh, once again, walking into Insect's jungle to uh, start a zone's Korn off a cannon minion. Uh, just taking it all away from the Rengar player. Of course, the longer you can delay Rengar's level 6, the less of a power spike you'll have. So leaving a wolf up for himself and making sure that he's using uh, Love CD here just to uh, get as much work done in the early game as possible. That's great work coming out of M3. His counter jungling is a team game as the Culling comes out to just push them back to the turret. Yeah, you can see Candy is playing with no fear here against the level 4s in this bottom side of the map. But so far, I mean, not too much has come out of this one as far as gold advantage is concerned, but with a couple of extra members here in this bottom lane for um, Royal Club, you could imagine that their focus is going to be on Dragon relatively earlier. Yeah, Dade once again going aggressive, just getting him as much harassed down as possible. He has only got that tier plus alongside at the moment, so he's definitely in his build-up phase, not expecting to see much damage come through until he grabs maybe an early Brutalizer to get some work done, although we have seen more Mana Munes being picked up early just for that 15-minute stack. It's so important to get that fully charged. Yeah, it's very, very true. As soon as that Mirror Mana is completed, Jace becomes a gigantic beast, of course. Having all of that extra mana to throw more accelerated Shock Blasts is just devastating, especially when you're going to be loitering around that Dragon to try and get that one started off. And if you hit three people with an accelerated Shock Blast, that almost gives you a Dragon. Yeah, it certainly does. I'd be interested to see whether Dada is maxing his Q or his E, uh, W or his E second. It looks like he's going for his W. Against melee matchups, Jace sometimes does elect to go for the E just for the burst damage that can come out of that hammer form. Although the persistent damage out of W is just so good at the moment. Yeah, Looper might be in a little bit of trouble. Zero is hanging around. But just going to wander out. Going to pick up some souls. Of course, Looper does know that he's there based on the fact that there are souls sitting on the ground. He's like, buddy, you're not being that stealth. Because you got these little orbs here that are only there if you're around. So pretty aware of what's going on. Looper is going to head back to base, though. And we're just going to see a very stale early game. And this is... Pretty interesting from, from China, who really want to be fighting. You can imagine they're all sort of itching in their boots at the moment, wanted to get something started. Yeah, I think that if any, uh, yesterday showed us anything coming into the Chinese scene, is that they definitely want to, uh, I guess, group up and take uh, the winning team fights when they can, but they want to do it over smart objective control now. Their ward vision has been great on the side of M3, and they've been able to, I guess, get advantages early in this game by just spotting out where Insect is. Uh, and I think that they will be happy to ride into a mid-game power spike that they think that they'll hit a little bit before Starhorn Royal Club. Although the team fighting prowess and pick potential from Starhorn Royal Club really needs to, I guess, be monitored closely by M3. Because in a 5v5, I think they win uh, at the first dragon. However, if anyone gets picked off, we've seen that it can be so devastating. Yeah, not to mention the Poe coming out of Jace as well, so... That could be scary. Plus, you don't really mention um, sort of synergy between Lucian and uh, Jace, but ooh, as the sidestep does come in from Candy, does get hit by the boomerang there just a little bit, but it's not quite a death sense as far as uh, danger is concerned. But yeah, having Lucian with the culling as well as those shock blasts, I mean, you can have some, a bit of extra range to finish off those targets. Yeah, and Dade's picked up a blue buff for himself, has elected to go that Brutalizer, so his damage has taken a... Pretty big spike, and maybe because they're looking for an early dragon here, doesn't want to have that lull that comes out of picking up the Madame Muno as well. So much damage coming through now. But I think they need to be careful of the back timing coming out of Candy. It is already 10 minutes, and they know that he hasn't gone back. 
As is Ooh, a coming actually through. coming through. Dade might have to flash. He is going to. Descends is going to land, though, and that's going to be first blood on the Dade. That being said, the teleport came through from Lupa, but he's taking so much damage. Ruo does pick up Insect, but that's going to be Lupa falling down straight away, and this Lee Sin has to run for his life. Korn's just going to rift walk over. There's the Force Pulse as well. Another Flay. And that is going to be a well-deserved kill for Zero. What a brilliant turnaround from Starhorn. Yeah, and that all started from Zero's map movement coming into the mid lane, able to react. Good teleports coming through from uh, uh, Looper, sorry, to try and affect the outcome of that team fight. But in the end, just not enough. Too many members in the mid lane, and they won't rotate into a dragon for this. So that yeah. one will still be up. And three kills to one, that's a very good start, especially when you think that M3 might have had more of a mid-game power spike with that Annie and with that Jet. Yeah, and as soon as you take away the Jace before he can do any work before that fight starts, that's exactly how you deal with what Dade's trying to do this game. So it was beautiful work, and making sure that they kept on to that death sentence until after he um, blew that flash was just beautiful as well. Just a really well orchest orchestrated three-man gank there in the mid lane, and there wasn't much Dade could do. Yeah, and understanding where the pressure on the map was being applied and what the appropriate response was to be. As we see the culling come out, and wow, why... HYY just eating the whole of that. That's half of his HP gone in one ability. Yeah, forced to use that Valkyrie as well, which is on a gigantic cooldown. But he's going to be okay. Just putting the pressure on there in this bottom lane as we do go back to standard lanes, of course. And I think this is really intelligent from N3, noticing that they want to get the majority of their players on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, they definitely want to set up for that dragon fight. It's now 12 minutes in. We've been seeing dragons between about 12 and 16 minutes being taken at the moment just because of the increased damage. And Pole is in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, oh, the flash just as the dragon rage kick was coming through. So Ruo not going to be able to kick him back towards the turret. And as Meganar comes in, Cole is going to be more than fine here in the top lane. Yeah, so Roy trying to get the water hop in. That will mean the Dragon is started up because they saw the jungler from the side of M3 on the top side of the map. And that will be Insect grabbing the first Dragon for his team. Smite is up and it will be secured. So, so far, Starhorn Royal Club just looking like they're controlling the bottom side of the map. Yeah, beautifully well played and well reacted to as well. It was almost instantaneous. They saw Ruo in the top lane and then just said, nah, we're going to Dragon. Yeah, so happen. HYY coming in has been able to stay even on CS in this talk. He will have his Trinity Force finished very soon. And we said there, not much known about this AD carry coming in as we see even more pressure in the mid lane. And he's really started to, I guess, hit his stride as Corky and will be looking to be in a very strong position in this mid game. Yeah, almost has that phase completed. So only about sort of 1600 gold before that Trinity Force is going to be done and that power spike is going to be gigantic and the fact that they skipped the need for any of those items in a dragon fight means that they can focus on denying the first dragon from M3 over and over again. Yeah, and he's up 700 gold already at 13 minutes into this game with his one kill and two assists so being able to affect the map more than Lucian has and Lucian's got a BF sword and a pickaxe, and this should be the time that he can actually do it, uh, get a little bit of work done, especially with the synergy between Braum and Lucian's uh, passives that come through in lane. Yep. It does make them extremely difficult to deal with. There's Kola looking to get aggressive, but Lupu uh, and Ryu's right oh, there. Oh, there's a bounce right into the Nether. Wallop coming in as well, throws a rock at him. Insect's going to be the focus here of Lupu, but he's not going to be oh taken down God. in time. There's a death sentence coming in as well. Ruo forced to use that safeguard to get to safety. Has been slowed down, but is going to be safe here and what beautiful play from Cola. I mean there was nothing Luka could do for about four seconds. Yeah and once again the rotations of Zero and Insect around the map is setting everything up for their teams at the moment. Roy looking to defend this turret. He's a might be in a little bit of trouble though. That Nar still does a lot of damage. Yeah, and that Hyper proc coming in as well for so much damage onto Ruo. They are going to be able to take this top out of turret as Candy and Love are going to put lots of pressure here in the bottom lane. So it might be a turret trade here as long as the creep wave does get here in time. And Ruo actually manages to save the outer turret in the top lane. Yeah, for he now. has for now. The Cola still pushing it on this one, looking to get one more creep wave in there. In they've bought Zero and Insect back, so maybe a little bit of a bait from Cola here, pretending that he's overstaying for the turret. Although it doesn't look like he's going to go super aggressive. The bottom lane turret has fallen in the meantime, a massive wave down there. Someone will have to go take that out, and it looks like it will be the mid laner. Yep, Looper does have his stun ready, so a little bit safe here, but just managed to buy a Seeker's Arm Guard, so wants to build up that Zonya's as soon as possible, and I think that's a smart idea, as we saw he yeah, was I in a lot of trouble I think he just sit on the time. Seeker's Arm Guard and maybe finish the Morella Nomicon. Of course, mana regen and CDR are so important 
uh, especially on someone like Annie, where you want to get through as many spell rotations as possible to keep getting that passive stun up. Yes. Um, so I think that he's just sitting on that for a little bit of AP and a little bit of armor against what is a relatively mixed comp, but Insect, of course, getting around the map so much with all of that AD. Yeah. We'll see what... Yeah, it's, it's the duo combo between the top and, and jungle that's really going to ruin his day, as we just saw. Looper standing on a ward here, so Royal Club just going to back away. Definitely respecting the Annie stun, though. Sitting on three charges, and I think this is really intelligent as well. You don't really know unless you look at how many charges he's got as to whether that stun is going to be ready, and counting that number in the bottom side of your screen is a little bit harder than just seeing the swirling. Gate, great grouping there from uh, M3 to be able to take out that mid turret. They've picked up two objectives for themselves now, realizing that the top lane was probably going to go down anyway. So just group up, take a more important objective in the middle of the map, and then just go out and push out all the lanes again. Reset. Yep. As that did happen, I mean, Candy did manage to get a bit of farm down there in the bottom lane, but HYY has been impressing Ooh, me with the fact Insects that he's popped his ultimate in the mid lane, Ooh. trying to get onto Dade once again. Yeah, actually, Descent's not going to land here as Dade's come through. The box is going to be down, and there's the double knock-up coming in from the ultimate with that Glacial Fissure. Double kill coming through for Dade, and they just underestimated the AoE coming out of this Jace. Yeah, being able to collapse this time onto Zero, who was looking for the flank because of good ward coverage, was key in turning that, and now Cole is in a little bit of trouble, has to try and back. Yeah, Candy's coming through, but he's going to be able to get the passive proc stun from that Braum. Beautifully well played, and... Candy's so aggressive as well. And all of a sudden, three kills onto the mid laner for M3. We said that Dade maybe not playing extremely well at the moment, but has definitely shown up in this match. 3-1-1 one, one and a 20 CS lead has really got this Jace in his mid-game power spike. Gone back and picked up a last Whisper now. He's going to be doing so much work in this next Dragon fight. Oh, that is definitely key. Those sort of double armor penetration items just to maximize that spell damage as well. So these Shock Blasts are going to be hitting for so much. Yeah, meanwhile, Korn splitting in the bot lane wasn't actually there for that last team fight. So he needs to be able to impact the map. I get he's picking up some nice CS for himself. And wow, Dade going aggressive. That might yeah, have been a mistake. Yeah, Zero's coming in here as well. The Ignite's already down onto him. It's going to get played back. But look at the damage onto Zero. Oh my goodness, I thought that that could have been an Ignite ticking. But no, it's going to be Dade falling down. Korn picking up a kill. Much needed kill on this cast to get him going. Yeah, horrible timing of M uh, Dade there to go aggressive because Dragon's up in 40 seconds. That's going to, uh, I guess, force his team to lose all control of the bottom side of the map. You just see the wards that are coming out of Starhorn Royal Club going to be able to rotate Insect down there as Ryu. Uh, yeah. Ryu wants a piece of Korn now. So I think he did for a moment and then decided, oh, no, 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 no. Kicks that Cassidy all the way back away, but he's going to be safe. Yeah, so I don't know why I was testing the water there. Has picked up his uh, Sight Stone as well as Boots too, so he's relatively tanky at this point of the game. Um, we'll be looking to maybe initiate team fights because apart from a Flash Tibbers, they really don't have much to get it going. Yeah, do they want to be starting these fights though with the fact that they've got some pretty decent disengage with that Glacial Fissure? and they want to be poking out with these Shock Blasts? Yeah, they definitely want to be poking out, but once that happens, you need to be able to get in there and not just allow the other team to walk away, especially because Starhorn Royal Club has got the first Dragon already. If they poke out enough, they definitely want to be able to get in there. Insect going once again with that ultimate has been spotted by a Pink Ward. Yeah, he's just going to leap onto it, and that is going to be the thr thrill of the hunt down as we do have M3 coming back through here trying to defend that one out. They are going to defend oh. that pink as well. HYY taking half his health in damage here as well. Adam Blaze is coming through with those Shock Blasts as well. Lots of poke from M3, and they're clearing out all of the vision. The much-desired Scuttle Crab going to fall down as well. Yeah, Cola sitting in a nice position rage-wise for that passive to come through. Does have his ultimate available, but the poke coming out of Dade is just making this oh, dragon fight if Cola so hard. gets a huge nah onto that dragon wall. Royal Club are a little bit far away for that one to happen, but it could be terrifying. Corn so just sending, gonna split with. Sending mid laners to opposite lanes, both teams grouping up, not looking for a flank at the moment, although Lucian has gone down into the middle lane. He's in very big danger of being collapsed on right here. Yeah, we do have the Cullen coming through from Candy, just trying to clear out this wave. And stop Cola from picking up that turret for free. He's going to get that one as well. Descent's on a love seat as well. And we've got a gigantic knock coming in. A three-man stun. Rue getting stunned up. Brilliant lantern ride. Going to get Cola out of danger as well. After getting his full combo off. Korn just going to rift walk over the wall. But no one going to die yet. And I thought that was definitely going to be 
the team fight that was going to net them a few kills across this map. Yeah, no follow-up coming through, and it looks like Dragon will be following, but Sahon Royal Club, one apiece. Ooh, no, missing gutsy the Gutsy Dragon, but Ruo with a brilliant smite going to take that one down, and no death sentence is going to be had from Zero. Yeah, so, so three managed to get end, this. A lot of uh, scuffling, I guess, and they trade a turret in the bottom lane for a Dragon. Uh, M3 definitely coming ahead in that one because dragons are just so key at the moment. Yeah, and the fact that this is their first dragon as well. So it's one dragon apiece. The next dragon is not as important to pick up than those 8% extra stats that just get so powerful in the later game. Yeah, especially for uh, people like Dada, who's building so much flat AD and penetration. Yep. It just means that the uh, AD stats are so much wor more worthwhile. Yeah, Looper just going to come back and clear out this wave. And we haven't necessarily seen how relevant he is going to be in this top lane anti position, but he is still doing fine on CS. Only about 10 down to Cola here. Yeah, has managed to pick up that Morellonomicon as well. So getting into his build. Actually, reasonably even across all lanes, apart from oh, maybe mid, where here, Dade has built himself a little bit of a lead. Korn definitely not doing badly on Kassadin. Has Looks like he's moving towards Azonia's Hourglass as his next item. But 3, 2, and 1, Dade looking to be this mid lane beast. Uh, now going to go back and pick up that, I would guess it would be a Mana Mune. Yeah, do you think that that double pink ward could have been actually on purpose? Just so that, you know, while a Royal Club are clearing out those pinks, the Dade can get some extra poke? Because that's 10 hits to take them down. I would be Probably interested not. if that's the case. I think it might be a little bit of uh, some slight communication issues with the fact that there are um, sort of Koreans and Chinese on this team that don't necessarily speak both languages fluently. And we see once again both teams just happy to go back to split pushing and picking up even more farm. Starhawk and Royal Club do have a slight gold lead, but it's 20 minutes into the game. This this game could honestly go either way. The evolution has come out of uh, Dade's mana into that Mura mana now, so he's in a very good spot. And Korn getting maybe collapsed on in this top lane. Yeah, this tower Ooh, is going down Insects very quickly altered. as there are five members here. Insect's going to try and come in with that Thrill of the Hump, but everyone knows that he is hanging around. There's the culling coming in as well. Candy's going to get slowed down there just a little bit. Winter's Bite is going to hit him. Look at that Force Ball's getting so much damage over everyone. They're trying to chase him down. Oh, Death Sentence just not landing, and Dade's here now. He wants to get these Shock Blast in, wants to get these Royal Club members low so that they can turn this one around. Yeah, so using the Cassidy and Slow to kind of corral people together. Insect unfortunately missed his second bowler. Otherwise, may have been to lock someone down. Oh, and there's wow. the Flash Timbers on the corner there. Is going to go down very, very low, but not quite enough to kill him. The playback was beautiful. And look at this box doing so much zoning. No one's going to fall down except Korn cannot hang around here. It's going to be 5v4. Yeah, so they pick up a turret for their trouble. May even be able to push through for another one as they're still grouped as five. No, electing to back off. Great flash stun. I, it, no, it was a tipper. Sorry, it just has gone on cooldown. So great flash tippers out of looper there to get that one started for his team. Yeah, and keeping a Cassidy down as well to the point where he can't go back in with that Rift Walk is definitely key here and did manage to pick them up an objective. So definitely worth the use of that Summoner spell by a Looper and not afraid to pull the trigger as well. Yeah, so HYY on Corky is elected to, I guess, maybe a blasphemous player because he's not going for that Blade yeah. of the and King's second item. What looks is like this? Is this going isn't China. <laughs> looks like he is going for potentially even a Bloodthirster. Yeah, it does have that Longsword there as well. So... Might be wanted to pick up a Bloodthirster, and that's... I haven't seen that since, like, Chaos's Corky. Like, that was a long time ago when Bloodthirster was the second item buy, but... See what he does decide to do. I mean, that Longsword might just be hanging out. Like, who knows? Yeah, he could just be going for his most efficient gold buy, although is not very slot efficient at this point in the game. I would expect it to be a Bloodthirster coming out, and... With the amount of burst damage that can happen, Bloodthirster acts as a quasi-defensive item, I guess. Yeah, so with that maybe extra just shield as well. just looking to get uh, his... HP pool a little bit higher. Um, I think the danger here for uh, M3 is how big uh, this Nart is getting in the top lane. He's just, Cola has been able to CS completely unharassed. Uh, he's 150 CS. He's picked up his Ranjuins and his Ninja Tableye. Now working on what will possibly be a Banshee's Veil. So he's just getting a lot of work done and may turn into this late game beast that we saw yesterday. Yeah, that's right. But you can't discount Dandy. I mean, not Dandy, sorry, Dade. Very difficult here, the Samsung players. Of course, on different teams. Candy is going to clear out this wave as well. Unbreakable going to stop any of these uh, skills from coming in, even the Death Sentence. Although that one's going to miss anyway, but 
Dade really wants to utilize this mid-game spike now that he's hit. I mean, he's going to get less and less relevant as this game Ooh, goes later and later. Lands. Candy's actually going to get hooked up here as well. Foster is bomb on multiple members as well. Very scary. Half health now for the bottom lane of M3. Yeah, and Looper does have his teleport up, so they do need to be careful. They're pushed pretty far up, and there is a ward behind them, so... If M3 want to go in, there is a way for them to do it, although it looks like they're just giving up this mid lane turret. Yeah, the culling and the shock blast are going to come in to clear out the wave, though, so it is still going to survive. Death Sentence not going to quite find its Mark Zero, just fishing for the members of M3. And they will break up. Nah has already evolved, so that one won't be available to the team fight. There's a massive wave in the bottom lane, so he'll just go clear that one out. And once again, nothing much happening around this map. Yeah, good wave manipulation here by M3, making sure that they do have a wave that needs attention on the side of Royal Club. 15 seconds till Dragon, so Royal Club currently have good vision control over the area, but M3 has grouped up and are looking to push through now. Nice scrying orb to, to discover the members of Royal Club hanging out over the side there. That banana brush going to get watered up as well, and Scuttle Crab is going to be taken here as the ward does escape. Oh, no, it doesn't. Don't worry about it. No vision is allowed in this so river. So M3 have complete control of this now. Uh, Starhorn Royal Club forced to come through a choke. We'll be taking so many shock blasts to the face, but managed to rest controls. Insect, ooh, looking for a pick again. Oh, the Rift War coming in. There's the Force Force onto a couple of members as well. Rua gets stunned up. The Death Sentence going to land as well, but that's going to be on the big member. Look at Cola gets immediately kicked out, though, so no Nars going to be happening. Loop is coming in. That Nar was massive. And Cola is wrecking through the team. Look at Corn damage as well. They're trying to escape, but they can't. Instant ace coming through for Royal Club. That was out of control. Ruo's kick was so good, but the flash Nar coming in through, from Cola hit five members. That was so huge. Just understanding that once he'd been kicked out, there was nothing else they could do to get rid of him. Able to CC everyone up. The follow-up persistent damage out of a Cassidy and Corky at this point in the game is just massive. Able to clean house with the ace for only one member. Pick up the mid uh, turret and a dragon. That's a 4,000 gold lead out of absolute nowhere. Yeah, that was absolutely beautiful. As we saw, I mean, Cola was on 0-1-1 before that. That's five extra assists. That guy hit everyone in that fight. Just beautifully played. And you have to mention Corn now. 3-0-6 and six now on Cassidy. And that force pulse across the whole team after that Nar came in just meant that M3 had to scatter. Yeah, and now Corky HYY has also been able to pick up his Bloodthirster. So his damage has taken a nice spike. He does also have the ability to get that shield up from his Bloodthirster, so it will be a little bit tankier as well. And 3-0-5, he's had a terrific first showing here against Candy, who we have to say has been a little bit lackluster on this Lucian. Yeah, hasn't really quite been able to make his mark. Did have a little bit of a moment of brilliance there in the top lane when he managed to get that kill under Dade, or help out with it at least, as Dade himself is going to pick up this blue buff. Yeah, and Dade has picked up a QSS, is worried about that Nar now, does not want to get Chain CC from Cola, so able to get a defensive item, but I don't know where the uh, damage output's going to come after Dade pokes them down. It just feels like they haven't really thought this through enough. The Annie's really not done much for me in this game, and in a top lane where you're against a Nah, who's being just a huge beast oh, in these yeah. team fights, Looper seems to have absolutely no response. Yeah, I mean, he tried to get his tippers down, but didn't quite do enough damage. With that, of course, we're used to seeing this big bear come out of the sky and rip people apart, but it's just not quite the impact that Looper wants it to have at this stage of the game. Having to go for that defensive Zonyas instead of, say, the death cap for really wrecking people really yeah. actually needs the Zonyas as well. And the evolution of uh, Insect's Rengar in this team comp is also extremely interesting. He was one of the last pros to really hang on to that damage build that can come out of Rengar and try and, I guess, assassinate the backline. Has used his ultimate with a lot of cooldown reduction more as a scouting tool yep. to be able to set up this Nar Kassadin and combo that you just can't escape from and then throw bowlers and try and peel for his backline. So he's definitely played this game well. Not a carry for his team at the moment, but setting up a lot of the team fights as they're now doing Baron completely off team. Yeah, and great. Cola just like gonna hang out in this mid lane, keep this one pushing, but you can see Baron already down to half health and they're having no worries here. No one can see what's going on. Scrying Orb not even available, so they can't check it with that one. That's Baron gonna be taken. Insect went down incredibly low. Valkyrie over the wall and Cola just gonna hang back up here and say, yep, no, you guys, you missed out on that one. That's inexcusable when a team disappears at 30 minutes for about 15 seconds and only leaves one member in the mid lane. 
you need to have a ward around that barren area. But great play from Starhorn Royal Club to be able to set up a line of uh, wards there and just ensure that I guess the Nar was enough of a deterrent in the mid lane to not want them to check. Yeah, and it just shows that M3 are playing scared at this stage. That last team fight was just so brutal that M3 just don't really necessarily know how to set up the fights that they want. They're not, not really getting out of their team comp what they need it to, to provide for them. Yeah, and you would think at 30 minutes now, we mentioned that uh, Dade had his power spike. That's nearly over now. Kassanen, of course, is an absolute monster at this part of the game. So the door may be closing for uh, M3 here. Not really much that they can do apart from maybe set up a pick. But even then, there's some very tanky members. Yeah, and this is already a three-item casted and has that Merlinomicon finished off as well. So a little bit of extra cooldown reduction, a bit of extra mana regen as well. So he's going to be rift walking around this one very easily. I've thought about the uh, Bloodthirster build on Corky a little bit, and I think it may be to do with sieging turrets. They don't have a great siege composition with Nah and Kassan and not being able to really hit the turret that easy. So having a, a Trinity Force and a Bloodthirster and just being able to use your Trinity Force props to slowly whittle down a turret while you have the Thresh Lantern behind ready to pull you to safety will make up for a lot of their problems that they do having taking these turrets down. Yeah, that is definitely true. Not to mention the fact that you have that shield as well for a little bit of added safety if you are going to get shot at while you're trying to make up for that slow, lower range. I very much enjoy this, this pickup. Bit of a blast from the past as well. I mean, it's always fun. Yeah, definitely. And we see Looper trying to clear out uh, the minions in the bottom lane. Looks like a rotation will be coming through from Starhorn Royal Club. Swapping pressure from mid to top. Making sure that they're just sticking together in the jungle, looking for picks where they possibly can. But some nice defensive wards coming out of M3. Yeah, that being said, Royal Club definitely going to be pressuring forward with their warding as Meganar is going to come through from Kohler. And that's going to mean that M3 have to back out. They need to respect this gigantic Nah, who now has a Banshee's Veil as well as that Ranger. Koro and Kohler today and yesterday have both impressed me with their management Ooh, of Nars passive. The has been popped. There's the flash of the Death Sense, but it's going to land onto a minion. Glacial Fission is going to follow up, though, and they really want to get a fight started. That's going to be immediately zero falling down. Korn's going to pop that Zonyas, but I think that he may not last very long as well. Candy with a double kill as they trade only for the... The, the support player is HYY. He's going to get caught by the Sonic Wave as well. Valkyrie not going to be enough. Is going to pick up the kill in response. Looper picking that one. And the back going to come through from Kohler. Assisted, of course, by that Baron buff. But a nice turnaround from M3 after a little bit of an overzealous engage by Zero. Yeah, Zero and Insect both wanted to go, although the passive Mega now was running out for Kohler. He was not able to do anything that fight except for throw out some boomerangs. So Great understanding of exactly when they had to fight coming out of M3. Now the Dragon's up in about, yeah, it's up right now, and there's still 15 seconds on HYY. Yeah, and with so many members of Royal Club dead as well, that means a lot of members don't have that Baron. So that extra split push potential, not going to be coming through as much as Arden Blaze is going to be used to pop right, they that need to be This Holo's so tanky, and he has got that Evolve coming through in a couple of seconds. Yeah, this Dragon's down so low. Descent's going to go wide yet again. Dragon is switching around with that focus, and Insect is going to be able to get a little bit more pressure. Oh, Dandy manages to steal it as well. I mean, Dade, sorry, with that accelerated Shock Blast, it's probably doing more damage than Smite, so I wouldn't blame Insect too much for that. Yeah, trying to get the Dragon. Another one picked up from M3. Great play from Dade coming out there. They did disengage extremely well from uh, away from that Mega Nar, who we have spoken about, so able to pick up an objective against the Tide, but... You still feel that there is a clock on this game with Nar just getting bigger and bigger. He's only 0, 2, and 7. That's the thing, but it's just providing so much utility in these team fights. Yeah, he certainly is. The thing I do want to mention is the fact that Candy had a gr much greater showing in that last team fight that they did win before. So managing to pick himself up a couple of kills. Now has that last Whisper under his belt, as well as the Vampire Acceptor. Probably going towards that Bloodthirster, but I wouldn't really mind if he picked up that uh, Blade of the Ruined King as well for a little bit more mobility. Yeah, maybe is, it wouldn't be too bad as well because he will be hitting, I guess, uh, Kohler a lot in these team fights. So we'll do uh, some extra damage against all that HP. Uh, Insect did burn his ult one more time, just looking for a pick, using it very much as a scouting tool with all the CDR in his build. Has picked himself up a Randuin's Omen as well. 
I think a locket of the Iron Solari needs to come out next just because of how much damage is starting to come out of Looper at this point in the game. And wow, they've started another one. Oh, punch. Winter's Bite's going to come through. Descent's going to come down as well as that Fossil Zone. Love City already down so low, but Cola gets obliterated straight away. Korn's going to come in, get a Force Pulse, and then use the Zonias, but he's going to have to rip walk out of that one immediately. Three men get hit by that Phosphorus Bomb, but it is so far a one for one. But without Cola in this fight, it's going to mean that Royal Club are going to have to get the heck out of here. Yeah, now the last Whisper has been finished up on HYY. He's doing so much burst damage, deterring the chase that could have come out of M3. But once again, just on a knife edge that evolution. If it had have came through, it would have been a one team fight easily. But a great kick away. All of the damage coming through, blowing up this Nah. And, and really intelligent communication coming through from M3 as well. This side that we're talking about has a couple of extra Koreans coming in. Maybe weren't going to be able to communicate as effectively. But knowing when to go in, exactly when that Nah was unavailable, was just beautiful. Yeah, and just doing a great job of, I guess, being able to stop all the CC that would have came through. So, looks like Looper looking to pick up a, a Void Staff as his next item. So, once he gets that, he'll be doing a lot more damage as Insect, once again, burning that ultimate. Yeah, Thriller Hunt coming down, going to throw out that bowler as well. Teleport's actually coming in here from Cola. He wants to get something started. Unbreakable's going to be used. Descent's going to land, though. Love CD taking a lot of damage, but that's the support. It's not necessarily someone you really worry about taking that damage too much. Just needs to get that Glacial Fissure off, which isn't even off cooldown yet. And it's a Braum support, so he's just so tanky at this point in the game. It's going to take a lot to blow him up, and it's not necessarily the target they want. In fact, it's just outright not the target they want to be yeah, it's using flat cooldowns out on. not what you want to hit. Yeah, so looks like there will be a waste of teleport coming through. But Quick again, the Sash yeah. being picked up by Corky now, so resting on three damage items, whereas it looks like Candy is going for a four, so eventually he will start doing a little bit more damage than this Corky in these long drawn out team fights. Yeah, the, of course, that's that quadra item situation that a lot of these AD carries do find themselves building. <laughs> gonna have that Bloodthirster finished off very, very soon. And Candy's just gonna be a gigantic damage threat. Yeah, so 2 1 and 4 now has really stepped up his game in the last couple of minutes. Also built himself up ACS advantage. It's really impressive to see how they move around the map with Candy and just try and get him as much CS as possible. Dade, of course, still farming this out. Has picked up his Yomo's Ghost Blade, as well as a Hex Drinker for a little bit of extra protection against this Kassanen pickup. Oh, the Chilling Smite actually going to land on Insect here. Ruo wanting to get the Dragon Rage kick. Kicks him into the Baron Pit as well. The Shock Blast going to land. Candy's going to pick up the kill credit. And Everyone that shows getting the an assist. important of the Scuttle Crab Shine. Able to get the movement speed up. The oh, team yeah. was able to catch up to Most Insect there, blow objective. him up. Surprised they're actually not turning around for a Baron here. Just Preferring to siege with their comp. I think their comp sieges relatively well regardless. I think a neutral objective could have been the right choice here, but they will be able to pick up potentially a mid turret and even be able to push through. There's still 15 seconds on Insect. Yeah, look at all the damage to this turret as well. It's going to be a Force Pulse immediately taking a land. Dade's going to go forward to take down that turret. Korn's going to use that Zonia's Collar, taking so much damage from Korn, but Looper's been caught up. The double Tibber's done going to come in into the Zonia's as well. Looper flashing out of there, but he's going to die eventually. The Nah, look at the cleanup squad coming through now for Royal Club. Ruo, you're not going to be able to flash far enough, buddy, unless Korn just decides to let you live, which is what he's going to. He didn't too have too charges. much mana. Too many charges on that Rift War coming through. That will be the possible inhibitor coming out if Kolo wants to tank this one out. No, just electing to rotate over to Baron. So you see the different mindset in teams. Get a pick. Go down mid lane, lose a team fight. Now this has turned into a four man, uh, I guess that was a 4v5 and just a devastating team fight. They'll actually be able to pick up both objectives here, leaving Korn in that mid lane to grab the turret, able to grab the Baron here as well. Really nice play coming out of Starhorn Royal Club after maybe a little bit of a disappointing pick that went through for M3. Yeah, and M3 just hanging around a little bit too long. That last hit on that turret to finish it off by Dade, really putting them in an awkward position here just as a second Baron going down. Just not respecting the AoE damage that comes out of Cassidy and Corky. And then able to get that once again, big Nara. And we've talked about how hard Narch can change C chain CC and just take you out of a team fight. Really well played once again out of the top lane. So 2 3 and 10 now for Cola. Really having a strong showing on this Nara. Now picked up a Thorn Mail as well. He's going to be nearly impossible to kill. Maybe even rotating into a GA. So you might have to kill him twice at this point. Yeah, it's just so scary. You can see that Cola with that Banshee's Vows, probably enough um, magic resistance to deal with Looper. And then, you know, Candy and Dade not going to be able to do anything to this guy. Triple armor items that are gigantic. 
so scary. This dragon's going to go down. Royal Club going to be able to potentially pick that one up. Ooh, Sonic Wave's going to land on it, though. Resonating Strike's available, but looking pretty dangerous. Arden Blaze not going to be enough damage. Yeah, in order great to get movement that out of Cola there, just walking towards the team with his ultimate. Once again, off cooldown, would have been able to bound over that wall and get another nice nice. So they didn't have any opportunity to be able to go in on that dragon. Another free objective for Starhorn Royal Club. Yeah, another thing we've got to mention is the power spike that Korn just managed to get as well. Doesn't have his void stuff yet, but that's a Rabidon's death cap on a Cassidy. And that's 6, 1, and 8. This guy's force pulses are going to be doing so much AoE damage. And he's going to be nuking people with his Q. And the Frozen Heart's being finished up by Zero. I think that's an important pickup for both Zade and Candy to be aware of because if Zero is anywhere near them going to be, I guess, mitigating a lot of their damage output as they have to burn the culling just to get rid of that Siege minion. Yeah, of course. Extra range on that one with that Baron available. Not going to be able to be hit by the turret. They're waiting for Kola to get enough rage up here as well. A nice bit of poke coming out of that Cassidy and Thresh combo. I think that as soon as Kola has enough rage to transform, they will look for a dive here. Yeah, they do have the creep wave here as well. Those melee minions with that Baron buff have so much extra health. Corn actually coming through aggressively. They are going to be able to take down that turret. There's a death sentence on the Rio as well. The box coming through. Everyone getting so uh, zoned out of this one. Corn going to pop the Zonia's out, guys. Cola's down very, very low. But look at the members of M3. They're getting taken down. Looper's going to have to get the heck out of this fight. Dade very low. There's a Nar to get the carry back into the team. It's going to be Love CD falling down. Candy getting obliterated. And Dade and Looper just wondering where their Chinese friends went. <laughs> As we see once again, the potence of Nar in a team fight, jumping forward, getting a two-man Nar, able to chain it with the W once again. Just so much CC coming through, and then the persistent damage from Cassidy. Corn has played this game absolutely beautifully. As HYY takes a lot of damage from Dade, has yeah. to back out of that one. Gets exhausted as well. Dade picking up that summoner spell, and they're trying to chase this one out. Acceleration gate going to be fantastic for that. Zero going to tank up that accelerated shock blast. And Looper just wants to get the stun. Oh my goodness, that bowler was fantastic from Insec, and that's going to let them get to safety. Yeah, and more importantly, this Cola is just sacrificing his life every time to jump into the team as the sole really tanky member and just set up the team fight. He doesn't care about his KD at, KD at this point. He's got four deaths, and every single one of them, except for the first one, has been him trying to jump in and make action happen. And yeah. it's just giving the team such an advantage. Now 10,000 gold in the lead at 41 minutes. And also using his ultimate in the way that it needs to be used as that uh, team fight dictates as well. Using it that time to just get the members a little bit closer to the Royal Club instead of going for that stun against the wall, just knowing exactly what he wants to do and the ins and outs of his champion as well. Yeah, has now picked up that distortion enchantment as well for the added flash cooldown and teleport. Oh, so going to be nerf. able to do that even more often, of course, using it almost like a flash kid as initiate at this point. So that's going to be even scarier. Speaking of which, there is a distortion enchant coming through for Looper as well, so that he can use his flash tip as um, initiate at the same time. Does have a Void Staff as well, so might be doing a little bit more relevant damage coming through. And has another Fiendish Codex, looking for some more cooldown reduction and maybe that DFG so that he can just get rid of someone straight out. Yeah, but there's just really few options for him unless he gets exactly onto HYY, who does have that QSS. He's not really going to be able to blow anyone out. As we have a massive wave in the bottom lane with two super minions starting to build up, Transform comes out of Cola, so maybe not the dive going to be available anytime soon. But you have to think this is only a matter of time before they have to send someone into that bottom lane. Then they can just tank out the turret and take another objective for their turn. Yeah, Royal Club going to see Dade down here trying to deal with these super creeps. This might spell go, but Cola is going to go back into that mini now. You can see just transforming back. Door of a little now. For now. Yeah, for now. He's going to want to build up that rage yet again. And that and we see Dade going. actually just taking out the super creeps and leaving the rest of the minions on the turret. So that won't be enough to take it down. Does buy them a little bit more time as the poke comes through onto Candy once again from Korn. Very aggressive. Have to use that Rift Walk aggressively. They need to go very soon because those super creeps are starting to do a lot of damage. They tried to send Looper down there because he has the teleport. And there is a ward behind Starhorn Royal Club. But he just wasn't able to clean the minions out fast enough. They're going to have to keep Dade or Candy there. 
Oh, Kwon actually going over the wall that Rift Walk and taking the Lantern back in. They're going to try and get some damage. Oh, Candy gets obliterated straight away. Kwon's burst just too much. Dade forced to get back. Love City's going to flash out of this one as well. And Royal Club just take control of this base. Yeah, this has been a textbook late game from Royal Club. Did have a little bit of trouble in the early game, but since then have just been able to take complete control of the objectives. Now getting bottom lane pushed up. Oh, the Nar under three members as well. Dade's going to get blown up. Kwon unable to get quite back in, but there's the Force Pulse. Looper uses that. Uh, the Zonyas, but it's not going to be enough to save him. Ruo, the only one alive now, and it's going to be Royal Club pushing through for the finish. What a beautiful passage of play by these guys. And you really have to question leaving Nar up in yeah. that situation and not even electing to first pick the Nar. Yeah, and then, and then picking a very interesting champion into it that I guess that Looper had a plan using this anti-top, but it just was unable to come through, especially in that lane swap situation. Yeah, it didn't work out whatsoever. In the end, he was just way too tanky. There was absolutely nothing they can do unless they burn everything. Yeah. And then Corn on Cassidy was just doing so much damage. That was a one combo at the end to just take Candy off the map. Yeah, it was. And this was Cassidy that was played into a counter-picked Jace as well, coming out of Dade, who played brilliantly throughout that game. You can't discount the way he played. This is definitely the Dade that we know and love, the guy that has all of the sweet mechanics and the ability to play his champions, but just was irrelevant as far as that game went as yeah, well. Yeah, well, the game just went too long and members yeah. got too tanky. Insect, of course, got extremely tanky on Rengar, and then that Nah was just absolutely massive in the top lane out of Kola. So um, I guess the two shining lights, as you said, were their jungler. Lee Sin had some great kicks of Nah out of oh, teamfights. Yeah. He even nearly turned one around the dragon pit when Nah had to flash back in. Um, and I think Dada, yeah, he had a terrific early game, yep. but wasn't able to translate it into anything. So expect them to either pick much more late game orientated because it's going to be a teamfight based game or just go super early game and try and push it through. Yeah, and really try and get these standard lanes as well. They need to put pressure on the fact that HYY is a sub that they haven't been playing with for very long and also hasn't had experience in the competitive scene. He needs to get the pressure put on him if um, M3 really want to push the pressure points of Starhorn. But we are going to go for a quick break, but we'll be back with Game 2 very, very soon.